Because in order to do the first, you don't have to do the second. Question number 12, Gareth Hughes. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change. Why did he announce that New Zealand would aim to be carbon neutral by 2050 at the recent United Nations Climate Change Conference in Bonn? The Honourable James Shaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, climate change is the greatest challenge of our time uh, as a Pacific Island nation, uh, whose closest neighbours are, of course, at the forefront of the risks of climate change, New Zealand has a responsibility to do what we can to help. The Paris Agreement that was signed up to by the previous uh, government says that all countries, all countries must achieve carbon neutrality this century, but that developed countries have a responsibility to take the lead. Uh, and the Vivid Economics report that was commissioned by the uh, cross-parliament all-party group Globe New Zealand indicated that New Zealand could achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. My belief is that because we can, we should, uh, and if we do, we will be able to reap the benefits of the greatest economic opportunity in at least a generation. What advantages are there to becoming carbon neutral sooner than most countries? And that's another Mi supplementary to the opposition. Mr Speaker, the evidence is clear that the sooner uh, we take action to protect our environment and our natural resources from the impacts of the changing climate, the easier and more cost-effective it will be. Pure Advantage's 2012 report, Green Growth Opportunities for New Zealand, highlighted that the sooner we move, the greater the economic opportunities, and I quote, a huge opportunity for New Zealand to improve our international competitive position. New technology and intellectual property will need to be developed in order to solve our own challenges, and if we do so, those can be exported to the rest of the world too. The Honourable Simon Bridges. Uh, can coal mining on the west coast of the South Island be consistent with being carbon neutral by 2050? Uh, Mr Speaker, ultimately uh, the coal industry uh, is phasing out. While I was um, at, the, at the climate change conference in Bonn, uh, I signed us up to uh, the Powering Past Coal Initiative, which is a UK-Canadian uh, group with 20 other countries that are committed to phasing out coal from electricity generation by the year 2030. To the Minister, what's the plan to help lead the transition to a carbon neutral economy? Well, Mr Speaker, uh, New Zealand's challenge and our opportunity is to transform our economy in partnership with industry so that it works with the planet, not against it, and lifts our living standards at the same time. We are intending to introduce a Zero Carbon Act and set up an independent climate commission. And we're currently working through that with officials and we'll have some announcements coming soon. We will establish a green investment fund to direct investment towards low emission industries. We'll work alongside communities and working people for a just transition from carbon intensive industries to clean, sustainable jobs. We aim to achieve 100% renewable electricity by 2035 and for the government's own car fleet to become electric by 2025. And we aim to plant by, in the next 10 years. Uh, and we will continue to invest in research and technology that can continue to reduce our agricultural emissions while increasing productivity. What actions has the Minister taken to date consistent with the carbon neutral goal? Mr Speaker, uh, in addition to the uh, initiative that I described before, the Powering Past Coal Alliance, uh, I also made another commitment to the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, which is committed to improving air quality and protecting the climate through actions to reduce short-lived climate pollutants. That concludes oral questions. Um, I call on the order of the day for the address and reply debate. Interrupted debate on the address and reply and the amendment proposed to it. Thank you.